From building parks to maintaining roads, public works professionals are essential in improving quality of life for people across the country. Now in Atlanta, Georgia, the American Public Works Association is bringing this incredible community together to learn, network, and find out what's new in the field. This is the Public Works Expo, and we're PWX-TV. Welcome to the PWX 2024, happening right here at the Georgia World Congress Center. I'm Tara Lombardo, and I'll be here throughout the event to bring you the very latest in the field of public works in a series of interviews and films with new content available daily across sessions, seminars, workshops, and networking events. It's all here at PWX. We'll be sure to capture and bring you the biggest topics and the most exciting developments. Today, our focus is on new technology impacting public works today, especially in artificial intelligence. We help cities automate their uh, data collection for roadside assets and then use AI to provide condition assessments, condition analysis. We'll hit the expo hall to hear how companies are offering new tools in AI and discuss how public works departments are using AI to change the game for their citizens. It's evolved and developed into a new tool that gives us greater capabilities in certain areas. PWX also features stories from across the country. We'll bring you a series of films about some very exciting public works projects. You can catch the highlights on the show, but you'll also find extended versions available wherever PWX TV is. Where can you watch PWX TV? You'll find our content displayed on screens here at PWX. Switch to the PWX TV channel and select Hotels. Find it all online via PWX meeting site. Or head straight to YouTube for the full list of content, including extended versions of our PWX film series. PWX TV is produced by Web's Edge. Make sure to like and share on all our social media as well. First up today, let's head to the PWX TV studio as an APWA expert gets us started with some exciting tech news. From GPS to asset management, technology plays a crucial role in allowing public works professionals to do their jobs effectively and best serve their communities. But as the technologies change year on year, how do you stay on top of the latest developments? while the American Public Works Association has you covered. I'm joined by Tracy Peterson, chair of the APWA Technology Committee, to discover the APWA's top five trending technologies for 2024. Thank you so much for joining us. Hello, thank you for having me. So tell us, um, first of all, why this list was created, what was the idea behind it, and how was it put together? Yes, so APWA is really on top of that uh, changing in the environment. Public works, we've always adapted very well to uh, whether it's an emergency or a trending technology. And so really having the uh, community and the members speak to what is coming up and we really need to stay on top of it because it doesn't change in an instant. We need to have time, but technology is changing very rapidly. So the technical committee members and the Council of Chapters come up with 16 trending technologies. And then the members actually vote on them. It's quite a game, and so people get really into it, but they, they have a lot of fun with the, um, identifying the top five. And those top five are ones that we really need to be paying attention to in our industry because they make a difference in our work and our communities. So what are the top five top techs? So this won't surprise anybody, but artificial intelligence is one of the top. And then we also have GIS mapping is very important to our communities as well. And then we also have lead service uh, pipe identification. So that is the lead services in the water systems that are going from the mains to the houses. And if you remember, um, stories from Flint, Michigan, that is very um, important to people's health in our communities. And then we also have um, 
sustainability in response to severe events. And so as climate change happens and we see many more intense storms coming through our communities, those actually um, damage a lot of our infrastructure. And so how can we be resilient to those through green infrastructure or um, other means to protect those transportation systems? Microgrids are the fifth one. And so the microgrids are important, again, for a resiliency aspect of looking at the energy system and making sure that in the emergency response, we can have a microgrid that's going to um, provide us that energy that we need to uh, get everything back up and running. So how do people get the list and what do you think we might be looking at for 2025? That is a great question and we had a lot of discussion yesterday at the Technology Committee meeting. So the um, the list is on the Public Works APWA website and then we also have articles in the APWA Reporter Magazine that comes out annually. And so the 2025, we are looking at, um, looking really at a, a new approach to this. And so what we want to do is look at um, where those trending technologies have been from 2018 until now, see where they're going. And of course, artificial intelligence is a big conversation. It actually has been around for decades, but it's in the limelight a lot more lately, just with the conversations around um, more of the generative AI and the chat GPTs and the, those types of conversations, but yet machine learning has been around a long time and a lot of us in public works have been using it for our pavement management systems and other assessments. And so it is very important while also um, educating and, and getting over some of those fears, but also having our eyes open. Tracy Peterson, thank you so much for joining us this morning. It was a pleasure. You are welcome, thank you. Watch for those technologies as they hit your department in the coming year. Now to a department who's transformed their city through AI and data-driven decision-making. Let's head to Kansas City. Kansas City is a powerhouse when it comes to technology. We use technology as a tool to make data-informed decisions that are driving unprecedented success in our community whether it's transportation, solid waste, or street maintenance. Knowing what we're doing, how we're doing it, when we're doing it is critical to us making sure that we do it smartly, efficiently, and getting the biggest bang for the buck. We take a lot of demographic information and, and environmental information and also the transportation infrastructure on the community, and we look at all this information together to make uh, better decisions on where the money should be invested. The beauty of our 311 My KCMO app is that we can meet people where they are. They are able to share information with us and report issues on their phone, digitally, and automatically. With a push of a few buttons, you can record an address, select a type of issue, add pictures, add other comments and notes and information that help us better understand the issue and also respond to it in a more efficient manner. The PWX Expo floor is home to innovators, big and small, in the technology that drives public works. Let's head down and hear from some of the companies who've brought their expertise to Atlanta as we find out what you need to know about artificial intelligence. We are Beacon Bid. We have a listing of RFPs, bids, uh, projects that agencies have done before. So we collect all of these specifications and we put them in one place. You can search the documents, you can use AI to generate kind of a, a best of from hundreds or thousands of existing projects that have already been done. And it saves agencies time from having to write it themselves or making the same mistakes that other agencies made. RMT, Roadway Management Technologies. We work with government agencies to help them understand how their roads are deteriorating. We actually utilize a few different types of sensors that are all working together, being layered, layered over by AI to hone in on a very accurate PCI metric. So we are Blinksy. Uh, we help cities automate their uh, data collection for roadside assets and then use AI to provide condition assessments, condition analysis on uh, anything that may on the roadway, whether that be pavement, signage, guardrails, 
uh, and help their maintenance teams. We can collect on an entire city, uh, provide condition on those in a matter of days rather than weeks or months. We provide road hazard information as a services through our AI equipped dash cam device. It will automatically detect objects that it is trained to do. We did a lot of machine learning, deep learning to train uh, these models and detect the objects and it's just expanding now. We should be thinking about AI because it's evolved and developed into a new tool that gives us greater capabilities in certain areas. We've used AI in public works for a number of years now, but very often it's sort of hidden and buried in the software that we make use of, so it's not obvious to us as being AI. Over the last 18 months, there's been an explosion of what they call the generative AI or the large language models, things like ChatGPT. And in public works, that can be really helpful for us as a force multiplier in terms of what we do. Coming up next year in January, we're going to be having what we call an AI Summit. Uh, it's a two-day event which will be virtual, online, uh, with a baseline of information uh, so that we all know what exactly we're talking about when we talk about AI and public works. And we're also going to add to that some case studies that really show how we can get great value out of AI in everyday public works operations. And also, uh, we have, as part of the structure of APWA, we have a technology committee. The technology committee, like all the other committees, has knowledge teams. And if you would like to get involved, uh, simply reach out to an APWA staffer and let them know you're interested and excited about the technology side of things. And we would love, you, love to have you on our uh, knowledge team for the technology committee. Uh, we want to be able to share people's experiences using AI and we want to bring in new insights and uh, new ideas into our association so that we can better serve the public. Make sure to get signed up to that great learning experience. Now for more on the tech that's driving improvements for citizens, let's go to Virginia's Harrisburg Public Works, where they've implemented from AI-driven routing to solar installations. We are a vibrant, thriving, diverse city. We are uh, a growing city, but we still have that intimate feel. Uh, we are still a family. Well, within Harrisonburg Public Works, uh, we are a staff of around 100 employees that work, on, work through non-separate divisions, uh, ranging from solid waste recycling, street maintenance, traffic engineering, sustainability and environmental divisions. The future vision of Public Works is to continue to be a sustainable green department, as well as being able to maintain services at a high level for our residents and travelers that come through the city. Um, we strive to be the best that we can in our operations, and we'll continue to um, do that through all the different programs and new initiatives that we haven't even thought of yet. We just continue to be that city that um, I frequently say, a city for all. That whoever decides uh, to live here in Harrisonburg uh, feels accepted, feels welcome, feels safe, and feels that they're taken care of. Preparing for adverse weather events and supporting communities when they do strike is a key part of Public Works' role across the country. But one city has seen it all in recent years, from Hurricane Harvey to Beryl and many other events in between. Houston, Texas Public Works Department has become something of an expert in big weather events. Now to hear more, we're joined by Randy Mackay, who is Houston's Chief Operating Officer. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for having me. Of course, so in speaking about weather, speak specifically on 
how important and how big a part that plays in the day-to-day -day life um, in the city of Houston. Yeah, it can't be understated. Uh, literally for half of the year, we kind of white knuckle this thing called hurricane season. We know that at any given time, something can pop up in the Gulf and we might get a little bit of warning, but the impact can be severe because of the unpredictability of the storm. And the reality is with weather, we've seen it all. Um, weather doesn't always have to be a rain event, doesn't have to be a wind event. Last year, our disaster was a drought, in fact, which had the exact opposite sort of impact that we would have normally expected. And it impacts public works in ways that most people wouldn't possibly realize from the condition of our infrastructure to our water and our wastewater pipes to the ability to get resources out to the field. We're there for all of it from beginning, during the crisis, and in the recovery mode afterwards. How have things changed in recent years? It's been amazing. One of the great things that's happened is Public Works has been able to step up and play that leadership role. Um, we actively participate in all levels of conversations with city leadership as we get ready for a particular event. We're out there many, many days, weeks in advance trying to do things. We spend time throughout the year uh, doing tabletop exercises to make sure that we know how exactly we need to be able to deploy, where the resources have to go, how we need to get it there. And it puts us in that position that when the disaster does come, we respond quickly, we respond with precision, and we get the job done effectively. So talk us through the impact of this year's derecho and uh, the hurricane on the city. You know, it was interesting, this derecho came out of nowhere, literally. Uh, it was really interesting. In fact, I had just left city council that day preparing uh, our budget presentation for the upcoming fiscal year. And you're driving home and it's a blue sky day. And by the time I got home, all of a sudden my phone started ringing about this crazy storm that had come through. And it wreaked absolute havoc on our downtown area in specific, many parts of the northern side of the community as well. Um, it almost felt like a tornado of some sort had come through. You know, we had to get out there and respond with no warning in this sort of an instance. Whereas with a hurricane, we have days to prepare typically. This was one where we had to get out there right away. And then just a few weeks later, Hurricane Burl came through and we're back doing it all over again. It's been really impressive to see how we partner with everybody throughout the community, but especially in the city side. This is one of those things about being a first responder that most people don't realize. We really are there first. We're there to clear the roads so that police and fire can get to the areas that they need to get to. We partner with them to help take care of dangerous situations. We convert our equipment to high water rescue vehicles when it needs to happen. There is something that is real and tangible about being a Public Works first responder in the impact that we have on the community. And don't forget, we're still providing services through and after. The water still has to get to people's homes. They've still got to be able to flush their toilets. And we might have some challenges in being able to deliver that, but we deliver it nonetheless. So now that you have all of that expertise from Houston, what recommendations do you have for other cities, big and small? Be in the conversation. It's one of those things that can't be undersold. Be there with your elected leaders. Help them know that you're not just a response resource, but that you're an active participant in these events. Figure out ways that you can provide more and higher levels of service throughout that so that you can get to the point where you're able to be more predictable, proactive, rather than just responsive. The response is incredible, and that, and that is a really, really important part of it, but you can do so much more from a public work standpoint to help your municipality be ready to go when disaster strikes. Great advice. Randy Mackay, thank you so much for joining us Thanks today. for having me. Now to a tech hub which needed its infrastructure to match. City of San Leandro, California has revitalized its roadways, bridges, and more to build a thriving community. San Leandro is a central city in the Bay Area. It has the beauty of the Bay on one side and the wonderful features of mountains, the hills on the other side. It's got many parks and it's got a vibrant community. One of the challenges that the Public Works Department faces is maintaining infrastructure that's already aging and frail during a rapidly changing climate and with very tight budget constraints. It's important that we have master plans to guide the work that we're doing. And whether it's the bicycle pedestrian plan, whether it's the storm water plan, whether it's the sewer system master plan, the tree master plan, each of those affords an opportunity to not only structure, 
the work that needs to be done, but also provides us the metrics to demonstrate that we are making progress, which in the end makes our residents happy. Sailing and a resident should care about infrastructure because it's what keeps our community moving and connected to each other, to their services, and directly affects our quality of life. Let's go to Nashville now, where the Department of Transportation has overseen an incredible and ongoing improvement to its multimodal infrastructure. NDOT was created in 2021 to put an emphasis on transportation and multimodal infrastructure. We are a Vision Zero city, so our goal is to get to zero fatalities on our roadway. So our number one focus is safety. We are working with the communities, adopting safe systems approach to address the safety concerns, of especially the pedestrian and bicyclists on our roads. We're building more ADA accessible sidewalks. We're building more protected bike lanes. And we make sure that contractors have permits to be in our roadway. We'll also be looking at our transit reliability to improve the transit um, access through downtown to ensure that they can stay on schedule and, and meet the needs of residents throughout the city, not only in downtown. Our Traffic Management Center benefits transit by introducing TSP, Transit Signal Priority. This gives more green time as transit vehicles approach our signals to ensure that they can quickly and efficiently move through our major corridors. We touch more lives in this city than any other department or division. We maintain everything from the potholes on the streets, picking up litter, open up streets, roads, and right-of-ways for emergency vehicles and first responders. We're here for the citizens of Davidson County. Artificial intelligence is a buzzword across all industries, but with an endless flow of data about the assets and resources they use and about the environment they work in, Public Works could be one of the areas most primed to benefit from AI. We're joined now by Wyatt Darnell of Doppler, a company with an end-to-end -end incident response solution, and City of Palmdale's Robert Wagner to discuss how Public Works might best use this ever-growing technology. Thank you both so much for joining us today. Thank you for having us. Thank you. So, Robert, how entrenched is AI in the world of Public Works? AI is getting more and more entrenched in Public Works. Um, as the technology becomes more and more available, um, it's really starting, we're starting to see it with uh, detecting potholes. Um, there's a whole slew of things out there now with AI that it's starting to really become uh, really big in public works. And Wyatt, how valuable a resource is AI to public works and what makes it especially valuable in your field? Yeah, absolutely, I'll hit the first part. So the I think what makes it really valuable to Public Works individually, um, it, it's kind of first I think we have to describe like what AI is. And so AI in two senses is like a generative piece where you can kind of generate content. I think it's really valuable for the kind of the front side, the administrative side. And then for operational folks, AI on the discriminative side is also really valuable to like what Robert said, detect potholes and help with operational things, detecting emergencies, things like that. For Public Works, I think we've slowly seen this adoption, but we're still really early, right? But as things keep moving forward, um, I think it's gonna be a game changer for the industry. And Robert, how did the city of Palmdale choose to bring AI into your response management for the spring of 2021? So our, our main goal was to cut down on our response times, making sure our emergency calls were going to the right departments at the right time. And that was something that Doppler provided us with. And we've significantly reduced our our dispatched call times and response times have all uh, reduced significantly. That's fantastic. Um, and Wyatt, um, is this replicable for other cities and what does it take to implement such a system? Yeah, so absolutely replicable. I think we're in over 100 cities already around the nation. Uh, we work with counties and municipalities. It's also important that as much as we're focused on public works, this is applicable to public utilities. So water, wastewater, electric, gas, solid waste. Um, and as far as like what it takes to implement the solution, a lot of the work um, is actually in training that AI, which we did years ago. So that upfront cost of being able to understand where these problems are and how they arise is already done. So for cities to kind of adopt this, 
The biggest thing is to work to understand how they operate. And we want to match that. We want to understand what those emergencies are and get them moving forward. So having said all of that, this question is for both of you. What advice would you give public works professionals on how to implement this moving forward? What benefit can they get from AI in their own departments? I would say jump in. Do, start doing it. Um, start doing your research and, and find where AI can really help your organization become more efficient. Um, and that was something that we really look to do. Yeah, absolutely. I agree with everything Robert said. I think what's also scary is that like AI is this buzzword and a lot of people don't quite understand how it's being applied. But look at, you know, Robert and what Palmdale's done, several of, you know, other municipalities and utilities that are doing this. Look to them to see where that expertise lies and how it's being applied. And then in the future, you know, follow that suite. But obviously it's at your own pace. But I think from what we've seen, it's, like I said, a game changer for this. Fantastic. Great information. Thank you both, Wyatt, Robert. Thank you for your time. Thank you for having us. Lots to be gained there from using AI to optimize your department. That's it for our first episode, but if you missed anything or want to catch some of our extended features, remember, there are plenty of ways to watch PWX TV. Where can you watch PWX TV? You'll find our content displayed on screens here at PWX. Switch to the PWX TV channel in select hotels. Find it all online via PWX meeting site. Or head straight to YouTube for the full list of content, including extended versions of our PWX film series. PWX TV is produced by Web's Edge. Make sure to like and share on all our social media as well. So we've covered the tech, but what about the workforce behind it? As public works departments seek to engage and grow their workforce, we'll have more insights tomorrow on how. Until then, have a great day, and we'll see you tomorrow.